Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Back on the project here. Uh, we're gonna hopefully get this thing buttoned up. Ran out of time on the last video, just had to get that video edited and in. Uh, we got a few more things we need to do to finish this uh, apron up, and uh, we'll hopefully get her done here in just a little bit. So let's get started. So we've got our new worm gear on here. And like we said in the previous video, this is a new, brand new worm gear. Uh, we replaced the old one that was completely just worn slap out. And um, I need to get in here and get this thing attached. So um, there's this uh, lock washer, or lock nut, I rather, that goes on here. You got this little uh, lock washer behind it. And there's a, a, a slot that goes in the keyway, which prevents this from turning on the key. And uh, what you do is you take this, uh, this nut and put it on here. And once you get it tight and adjusted, you actually bend down one of these uh, prongs into one of these four slots and that locks it in place. Now, these lock nuts like this, bearing lock nuts, they can be really difficult to get put on uh, because you can't put a wrench or anything on them. And I actually found this, this is a, uh, a little socket that's got four prongs in it and it's made exactly for putting these uh, lock nuts on. And it takes a half inch socket. Let me grab a wrench. There we go. And it just puts it right on. You know, when I got this, when I actually replaced, uh, or I am replacing all the, the uh, washers, or the, yeah, the, the washers behind here as well as the nuts, because the old ones, uh, they had just hit them with a hammer or punch or whatever to tighten and loosen them. And they were just worn out. And uh, anyway, I was able to pick this up from my local Baron supplier. Uh, they were able to get them for me. You can order them online, whatever. But, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty tight. I'm gonna go ahead and get the one on the back on and get this adjusted where it'll spin, but there's, it's not super tight. Um, and get those bearings adjusted. I'm gonna do the other one off camera, it's just on the back. Uh, I think I got that adjusted now. Uh, it's tight on both sides. Got good hardware in there. I will uh, probably wait and uh, lock this thing down right before we get through. I just wanna make sure everything's adjusted out right. So, and we'll just, one of those tabs should line up in a hole. If not, I can move the, the nut just a little bit and make it fit. Uh, but anyway, that's that. The next piece that goes on here is this bar, and this is kind of interesting. This is an interlock. And basically what this right here does is it prevents you from engaging uh, the cross slide feed when the half nuts are engaged. So if you think about it, you can theoretically engage the half nuts on a certain thread pitch and then also engage the feed at the same time. And your machine would be fighting with each other because they're driven by two different rods. And if you were to do that, something's gonna break. It's gonna be a bad day. Uh, so to, to get away from doing that, they created this little interlock. And so the way this works is, is right here, um, you watch this little thing here. When, when I engage the, the feed, it pulls this little rod in, okay? Well, there is a um, slot in the back of this this rod fits back here, and if you look, there's this little piece here. This fits into this little cam, and when you engage your half nuts, it pulls this over behind that slot, and that prevents you from being able to engage the feed um, when the, the half nuts are engaged. It also, if the feed is uh, already engaged, it prevents you from uh, turning the half nuts on. So. Uh, it's just a little safety device. It fits in there, and if you look here, I'll do the half nuts, and you see it. When you engage the half nuts, it just pulls that thing over and goes right behind that little that little catch. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put those on. Uh, there's just a couple of uh, plates here that kind of hold that in place. So let me get these on. Next, there's a little cover that goes right here. That just keeps trash and stuff from falling down in there as bad. 
Um, and there's a couple of uh, screws that hold these in place. Got a couple of um, bolts that go in here. And um, it just holds that little outer cover on. All right. Next thing to go in here is gonna be this little um, uh, thread uh, gauge, thread dial. And uh, this comes in the front. This basically has your numbers on it that lines up, tells you when to engage your half nuts when you're threading. And uh, so I'm gonna put a little oil on this. Let me squirt some up in here. So it comes through the front here, like such. And then on the back, we have a little worm gear that engages into the uh, half nut rod. And there's a, you can't, probably can't see it. There's a little detent here. There's a set screw and those engage with one another. And that just slides right up on there. And grab the... There you go. It, it found its hole. And there we go. That'll just, like I said, that'll go on the feed rod, or on, excuse me, on the threading rod. There you go, and uh, that'll operate the thread dial up front. So I'm back around on the front now, and uh, just a few things to button up here, and I think we'll have this uh, pretty much back together. Uh, first off, here's where that other little um, bearing nut goes into lock, uh, lock nut and, and the lock washer behind it. And I need to bend a little tab in there. I, I've, I've played with these and adjusted. I've already done the one on the back side. Uh, I've already bent it in. So I look around here, there's four uh, places that I can bend it into. And the way this washer is designed is that one of them should line up or pretty, be pretty darn close. And it's this one right here. So I'm just gonna take a little screwdriver and uh, we're just gonna bend that in there. I'm gonna take a little punch now. Let's see, yeah, actually I can just, that's got enough strength to it. It's been in there. So that is now locked in place and Next thing, there's a cover that covers this up. So here's the cover that goes on here and there's three little bolts that go in here. The old ones were kind of dinged up a little bit so I'm replacing them with new ones. But we'll get these in here. But we'll go ahead and get these tightened up. And that cover is on there. So the next thing to go on here is gonna be the big hand wheel that goes on the front. Before I do, when I got this lathe, there's a handle that comes out here and it was broken. It was snapped off and it was gone. Uh, I pressed out the little piece that was down in here and I've ordered a new knob here. And this just presses in here. The knob actually turns. Uh, it's the kind that it's, it will turn in your hand. I just got that from McMaster Car. We're gonna take this over to the Arbor Press and press that back in. Uh, and then we'll put this uh, mount the wheel. All right, so I've just got that knob kind of just in there. Lower that down. And hopefully that'll just press right in. And it does. The other one came right out what, without too much trouble. And I think that's it. And the knob still turns. Perfect. All right, we'll go put that back on. So I just put this uh, little spacer in here to kind of hold it in place while I was, uh, to keep this from sliding out. As you can see, it didn't see a little tension on it. So I'm gonna take all that off. And we should have a Woodruff key. Tell you what, I'm gonna find a new Woodruff key. That one there's kind of loose. You know, guys, when we took this thing apart, there was a little bit of play in this hand wheel and I couldn't figure it out at the time. I think I just did. The Woodruff key that was in here is too loose. It rocks. And uh, someone had just put the wrong Woodruff key in there, I believe. That Woodruff key is a tight fit. 
And uh, I think that's where that rocking motion was coming from. So um, let's see, we can go ahead and slide this one on here. There we go. All right. And there's a washer that goes on the front of this. And then the nut, it tightens it all up. And look at that, no more rock. I swear, some people are ding-dongs. Why in the world would you have put the wrong one on there? All right. All right. And I think what I'm gonna do, let me get a dead blow. I'm just gonna tap this a couple of times to tighten it up. All right, here we go. That should be tight enough. And look at there, no play, just like we want. Man, what an improvement that is. So I think we pretty much have the apron back together. The only thing I've really got left to do is I need to get the oiler put back on. And I've got a little couple of things I need to do that oiler first. I took it apart uh, over the weekend and was looking at it and I've ordered a few parts that I need before I can really put it all back together. So, uh, so when those come in, we'll get the oiler hooked back up. Uh, but the apron itself is all reassembled. Uh, the other thing I need to do is, is get back in here with my can of paint and uh, just finish kind of touching up some paint on here. There's a couple things I want to do to kind of get this uh, looking a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, it's all ready to go. Um, I will, I do still need to adjust uh, the clutches on here. I'm gonna wait till I get it back on the machine where I can actually test them and see. Right now I can kind of get a feel for how they are, but until I get it on the machine, I really won't know for certain. But that's real simple. You just tighten or loosen these uh, little castle nuts and there's a uh, cotter pin that goes through there once you get it adjusted. Uh, but I'm gonna, again, wait and do that. Uh, but this thing is back together. Uh, before we get out of here though, I want to show you a couple things over on the saddle because uh, I've done a few little things on it. Uh, of course, that's the part that mounts on top of this and just give you a quick update on that as well. So back over on the saddle here, I just want to point out that um, after a good bit of work, I was able to get all my oil lines uh, cleaned back up. I ended up, and, and I apologize, I, I, was, I did most of this off camera just because I was trying to get it done. I would barred some stuff. And um, I, some of these, these lines were so stopped up that I actually had to get a hydraulic pump uh, that goes on like a little uh, jack. It's like one that connects to a jack that has a hose. And I connected the lines up to the to hydraulic jack and I was able to push enough fluid uh, through these lines and push all the trash and stuff out of them. I got them all uh, put back in there and, and like they're supposed to be. So that's good. The problem I've got is that when I was putting this line back into the block here, um, the little end broke off of it. There's a little compression fitting uh, that goes up on there, a little copper, I'm assuming, little piece that goes in there and it, it compresses in there and that's what seals it up. Well, no problem I thought. I just run to Lowe's and get a, a new one, you know, no big deal. Problem, uh, the size of this is an oddball size. I think it's 3.30 seconds, um, and I, I, I looked it up. The only place that I'm able to find this size of fitting is, is through Bajour, who makes all this lubrication system. And uh, it's such a small line that this is just a non-standard thing. So I'm probably gonna have to special order that little uh, fitting there. I've got enough hose here that it, it snapped off just right here at the end where it just been bent around. I got enough hose here that I should be able to um, just cut that off and put a new one on there, no big deal. Um, but I'm gonna have to order that. And I have ordered some, I ordered those sight glasses from Bajor before, and they have like a $50 minimum order. So um, I, gotta, I gotta do some research. I'm, I'm gonna look around and see if I can find someone that's got some in stock instead of ordering them directly from Bajor. Um, and I may actually, look over, I, I need to get some fittings and do some stuff over my milling machine that I need to get some parts from them as well. So I may just put together an order and get some other stuff that I need in the shop anyway. I gotta figure all that out. So that's my hold up right here is getting that on there. That fitting goes in here. This fitting goes in the top and that, 
basically just comes from the other distribution block. Uh, but other than that, the, the, the saddle is ready to go back on and be scraped in, uh, getting all these oil lines cleaned up and cleared out and turned into a much bigger job than what I was thinking it was gonna be. They were really cruddy. But anyway, we made some progress on this as well. All right, guys, so with that, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, this little apron turned into a little bit bigger project, spread out over more videos than what I figured it was going to be, but we got it ready. It's, it's ready to go back on. Uh, once, probably the next step is going to be uh, getting the uh, saddle scraped in, and uh, we're, I'm probably going to do that. I got another scraping class coming up here in about a month, and I'll probably do that during the scraping class. Uh, Richard King will be here then and I'll have some expert advice to kind of help me. I really kind of know what needs to be done, but uh, I think I'm just gonna wait and do it then. It'll also be a good uh, example to show in the class uh, so they can see some advanced alignment and stuff like that. So uh, probably gonna wait and do that. I've got some other things we can probably work on between now and then though uh, on the lathe uh, to have everything else ready uh, once we do that. But with that, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for keeping up with this project. Thank you for keeping up with all the projects in the shop. Leave me some comments. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.